We often wonder if life on other planets could be completely different from what we're used to. Maybe other extraterrestrial life forms don't rely on the same chemical reactions as us. There are many intriguing alternatives, for example, silicon. Now, how about we explore this wacky idea? What if we were silicon-based instead of carbon-based? Now, carbon tends to hog all the attention, and rightly so. It's the building block of all life on our fantastic planet, and also one of the most abundant elements on Earth. It's the superstar behind DNA, proteins, fats, sugars, and even muscle tissue. 97% of our human bodies are made up of six elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Carbon is the glue that holds everything together and gives our structures strength. And it makes up 18% of your body. So without it, there'd be no DNA or any of the cool stuff that makes you, well, you. But hold up, did you know that there's another super abundant element called silicon? More than 90% of the Earth's crust is composed of silicate minerals. So on Earth, this element is second only to oxygen. Silicon is also carbon's neighbor on the periodic table. Well, why are we made of carbon then? Well, here's the deal. Carbon's chemistry is insane. It's the smallest atom that can form four bonds with almost any other atom. This opens the door to creating incredibly complex structures. Carbon can weave long chains, form loops, and build intricate three-dimensional shapes. In fact, diamond, the hardest substance on Earth, is made of carbon atoms. Silicon has a similar ability, but its bonds are larger and weaker compared to carbon. They're super unstable and easily break down into single bonds when exposed to liquids like water. In other words, it doesn't fit in the universe as well as carbon does. Also, even though they both can create complex structures, there's a catch. When silicon reacts with oxygen on Earth, it forms silicon dioxide, also known as silica. It's what you find in sand, and you wouldn't want to breathe out sand, would you? But let's step into the what-if universe. Even though carbon and silicon share some similarities, Life as we know it would be totally different if we were silicon-based beings. So what would it be like? This type of life would be quite different from ours. First of all, forget about the complex organic structures. Due to the weak nature of bonds, these life forms would be simple and primitive. Basically, you would see amorphous blobs or clumps of silicon compounds instead. It's like Horta from Star Trek or Cork from the Marvel Universe. These blobs would be super fragile. Because of this, reproduction would be a big challenge for them. And let's not forget about the whole starting point of silicon life on Earth. Carbon-based life thrives in liquid water, but for silicon, water is a no-go. As we mentioned, its bonds crumble in the presence of water. So how about a different liquid medium for silicon-based life? For example, sulfuric acid. Yep. Acidic conditions would be the perfect home for our blob friends. But these changes don't stop there. The whole planet would need a major makeover. Silicon-based life wouldn't need oxygen like we do. Oxygen would turn them into rocks, and that's not ideal. So say goodbye to our current atmosphere and prepare for a whole new setup. Also, get ready to crank up the heat. If you were made of silicon, you'd need scorching temperatures to thrive. We're talking about melting points of 2,570 degrees Fahrenheit here. In other words, Earth would become an acid-soaked, fiery inferno. As you can see it, it would be quite miraculous for silicon-based life to exist at all. The odds would be stacked against it. But even if it did emerge, there would be a lot of problems. These blobs evolving into intelligent beings like us? That seems to fall into the realm of science fiction. But this idea raises some complicated questions about the origins of life and the conditions necessary for evolution. For example, can we really consider such life forms alive when they don't even perform the basic functions we're familiar with? We may never find out the answers. But it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. The conditions and ingredients required for life to develop might vary significantly. We might find life forms that feed on lightning or geothermal power. So, what if life could be based on other chemistries? 
let's take a look at ammonia. Just like water, ammonia is a common chemical found throughout the galaxy. And guess what? It can also dissolve organic compounds just like water does. But here's where things get really interesting. Unlike water, ammonia has some unique properties. It can dissolve not only organic compounds, but also metallic ones. Imagine the kind of chemistry that could arise from that. However, there are a few challenges that come with using ammonia for the basis of life. First, ammonia is flammable when it comes into contact with oxygen. So ammonia-based life forms would have to be careful around any open flames. Secondly, ammonia has lower surface tension than water. In other words, it's not as good at holding molecules together. This could make it harder for molecules to form and create some complex beings. Ammonia also has a much lower freezing and boiling point than water. Because of that, the chemical reactions and processes in ammonia-based life would happen much slower. Imagine if everything in your body, from your heart beating to your thoughts, happened in slow motion. But it's not all that bad. Ammonia-based life could exist in places where liquid water can't. Take Titan, for example. This moon of Saturn may have hidden oceans of ammonia beneath its surface. Even though it's located outside the habitable zone of our solar system, it could still be home to unique forms of life. Who knows what kind of strange and fascinating creatures could be swimming around in those oceans? But ammonia and silicon aren't our only options. Let's talk about a weird and wacky concept called alternate chirality. So, just like some people are left-handed and others are right-handed, molecules can also have different versions of themselves. Sometimes it's like they have a mirror image, and scientists call this chirality. Here's the cool part. Life on Earth ended up using one specific version of these molecules. For example, the amino acids that make up proteins are left-handed, while the sugars in DNA and RNA are right-handed. These amino acids are very picky and can only interact with molecules of the same chirality. Now, imagine extraterrestrial life existing somewhere out there in the universe. These extraterrestrial beings could evolve to use the opposite chirality compared to life on Earth. They would still use carbon and water just like us, but their molecules would be mirror images of ours. So, what would happen if we encountered these creatures? Well, it could go two ways. First, if their chirality is different from ours, there would be no interaction at all. We wouldn't be able to eat their food or get infected by their viruses. Phew, no extraterrestrial diseases for us. But if there are extraterrestrial critters that don't rely on chiral nutrients, like some bacteria on Earth, they would have a field day. They could eat as much as they want, multiply endlessly, and have no predators bothering them because they're of the wrong chirality. And this could cause total chaos in the food chain. We have no idea what would happen then. The universe is full of surprises. So, as you can see, the idea of non-carbon life forms would be fascinating, but very rare. Our form of life seems to be the most probable and prevalent one. But hey, the universe is a vast place with billions of stars and countless possibilities. We can't rule anything out just yet. And who knows, maybe in the future we'll create our own silicon-based life forms in a lab, even before we discover them in the cosmos. After all, human ingenuity knows no bounds. Until then, let's appreciate the beauty of our carbon and keep pondering the endless possibilities.